Welcome to the next chapter. In this chapter, we are going to talk about the architecture of Dynamics 5 customer engagement application. The previous chapter, we discussed about what is mean by extending Dynamics 5 CRM and what is the need for code based customization. Now, let's have a look at what is the architecture of Dynamics 5 customer engagement and how we can customize it. So, Dynamics 5 customer engagement application has an entire architecture which means it has multiple tiers or layers. We talk about the architecture of Dynamics 5 in course second of the series as well. We are going to repeat that once again here for those people who are just starting on this particular course. So basically Dynamics 5 customer engagement still having the same architecture as that of Dynamics CRM. It has been changed for many years. I have been using Dynamics CRM since version 4.0. At least since then it hasn't changed at all. The features has changed many functionality, configuration option, etc. change, but the underlying architecture hasn't changed at all. So we have an entire architecture here for Dynamics 5 customer engagement application, which developers can customize. Now, knowing the architecture of the application is very important for developers so that they can customize it as well as extend it when they have requirement to implement. So basically it has three layers. First one is presentation layer. Second one is business logic layer and third one is database layer. So we are going to talk about each of the slides in detail in the coming up slides. So this is a picture where you can see the complete architecture of customer engagement application. It has the presentation layer at the top. Then it has the database layer at the bottom. And in the middle of these two, you can find the business logic layer or application logic layer. So presentation layer, which is host on the IAS server, database layer, which is host on the SQL server database, and then the application layer where we have all the logic, all the business logic resides. As I already discussed, there are three components to this architecture. First one is presentation tier or layer, business logic layer, and third one is database layer. Now, when I'm talking about the presentation layer, that is where we have all the forms, all the reports, views, charts, etc. resides. That is this portion of the architecture. You can see that the customer engagement application can be accessed from different clients such as web, Outlook, mobile. These are some of the client using which we can access the application. And then here on the right hand side, you can see the reporting area that include dashboard, charts, Excel and SSRS. That is the report. We know that we can access the report from the UI. We can access the views, the charts formed, etc. from the UI. And we also have learned that these reports and views, etc., can be customized from the UI itself. Forms can be customized using Form Designer. So that is the customization that you do at the presentation layer. Now, any customization that you do at the presentation layer on the UI is known as out of the box customization. We learn about how to the box customization in very detail in the second and third course of the series. So we are not going to talk about that. So any customization that you do on the presentation layer is the out of the box customization. Also here we have a gear button. Here also we have one. So wherever we have a gear button, what it indicates is this is where we can perform customization or these comments are customizable. What is at the reporting level for dashboards, views and etc. The other one is here. Here is written extensible application, form and client side script ribbon, sitemap, and etc. Web resource, and then JS libraries. In addition to the out of the box customization, also on the UI, we can perform customization such as sitemap customization, ribbon customization. We can embed web resources on the form. We have seen that as well. And then we can just customize the CRM form by implementing JavaScript web resources. We can implement logic on the CRM form with the help of JavaScript file. We are going to see that in this course. And also, thirdly, we have integrated application. There are many application. This can be Microsoft application or third party application, which can be integrated with customer engagement using UI. That means a front end integration is possible as seen in the picture, front end integration. For example, customer engagement application can be integrated with SharePoint using UI. You don't need any coding for that. We can integrate that with many other application with the help of UI itself. So that's about the presentation layer which is hosted on the IES. Since you are using the cloud version of the application, you don't really see the IES server. But if you are using the on-premise version, then you have to set up the IES first, then the SQL server, 
then you are going to install the customer engagement application that point in time all the presentation layer all the forms report everything going to be reserved on your IA server so that's about the presentation layer next layer is business logic layer so this is where the business logic resides so if you look at this picture in this area we have uh, pre event plugins which is nothing but a donut assembly post event plugin and then custom workflow activities so by default in your CRM organization there is a lot of processes such as plugins workflows business process flow and etc we know that workflows business process flows etc we can create with the help of UI tools we have learned that now we also have processes such as plugins by default there is a lot of plugin access in the system that is the logic of the application for example when someone is trying to qualify lead record what happens it is going to create a new opportunity record going to create a new account and contact record same point in time the lead record is going to be qualified and it's become inactive so this is a standard procedure but this is a standard business requirement right so it has been done by some code some plugin now if i want to customize that logic i can write my own code that is known as a plugin once i write that plugin code i can make it as a donut assembly then i can register that here that is what we are going to cover in the in this particular course where we'll be developing plugins custom workflow activity etc also in the very similar way workflows can be customized with the help of code we call it as custom workflow activities we'll develop code create it as a donut assembly register that with the server then we'll extend the workflows as well also we have synchronous and asynchronous business logic over here anytime when you're running a process such as plugin or workflow it can be triggered synchronously or asynchronously so it is managed by this part of the uh, application or architecture then business entity components we have a lot of entities in the system so every entity we have a schema and that schema is stored in the xml format that is what managed here so we have 400 plus standard entities and then we have created a lot of custom entities everything will be reside here in the xml format left hand side we have security right hand side we have processes Right. security means we have security roles business unit and then field level security etc it's all managed which is also part of your business logic layer so this is a business logic layer or application layer which you can customize by default we have the business logic there as a developer we can just integrate your logic also there the coming up chapter we will see how we can develop plugins and customer flow activities then we'll be talking about the business logic layer more and finally we have the bus and finally we have the database layer this basically hosted on the sql server database so database layer includes your data so every record that you have created such as the accounts the contact lead opportunity anything all the records will be stored in your database and also the metadata every configuration that you have done the layout of the forms the design of your views and charts etc will be stored in the database itself so here in this picture you can see there are two databases one is data and metadata previous to crm uh, 2011 we had two databases when you install crm 2011 we used to get two databases created but now we have only one but it is still displayed as two so within the same database some portion will be used to store your data other area used to store your metadata and also the queries the stored procedures all is belong to the database layer so once you install your customer engagement application on the on-premise setup a new database will be created and it will store all the data and metadata so every time when you're trying to create a new account record it will be stored in this database every time when you're trying to customize a form then save it that configuration changes will be stored in the database so you don't need to make any changes when you're trying to access a new report or when you're trying to access an existing report from the system it will be accessed through the filtered sql views so every time when you're customizing the report and accessing them that will be accessed through the filtered SQL views. That is a mechanism just to filter the data from the database in order to avoid the direct access to database. So that is the database layer. So just to summarize, in the chapter, we discuss about the architecture of Dynamics by customer engagement application. It has three layers, presentation layer, business logic layer, and database layer. So as a developer, you have to understand these three layers 
and when you're performing the customization with the help of core such as plugins and customer flag activities knowing the architecture is very important that is it for this chapter see you in the next chapter